Hi everyone, my name is Sean. Today we're going to talk about how to create a 360 virtual tour of a car using a physical turntable like this one. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do when you're capturing a 360 photo of a car using a physical turntable like this, which is motorized, is to see how long it takes for the physical turntable to have a complete 360 turn. Your turntable would probably come with one of these uh, remote controls that would start and stop, and we just get it started. So I'm gonna use this one. So because it's turning like that, and I'm gonna use here, and as soon as it reaches, I'm gonna start the uh, counting. It doesn't have to be like very accurate, but the goal is to just get it like a, like a estimate, maybe in a one second range of how long it takes for a complete. So we're gonna sort of speed this up uh, and uh, I'll tell you how long it took. So now it's almost back. Uh, I'll get here and it's stopped. So it's 44 seconds. So we need that number, write it down, remember it, and we're gonna show you what's next. Now that we know it takes 44 seconds, I'll open Glow 3D app and uh, I'll start with a plus sign at the bottom. So here I can scan the barcode, I will skip that part, and I will choose what kind of car it is. So I will use the hashback, and uh, now I'm gonna mount it on a camera, like on a tripod like this, um, and where you would need to have a phone connection uh, to create stability. And then, uh, as you can see on the screen, we have the um, side of the car here. So I'm gonna mount this on. And I will adjust this slightly. So it's important because here we're gonna do the setting. As you can see, there are a couple of options that we can choose from. Uh, and we start with the option of turntable direction, which is right here. And uh, if you remember, uh, ours was a going uh, basically left to right or counterclockwise. And um, so I choose that. So here on the lower left, it is showing me basically how it works, right? And I can tap to change that as well, as you can see. So I'm gonna just tap it, change it to the direction that it was going. Um, on the top right, the camera type. So you always want to have a more zoomed in version. It's very important because you typically would have Room, and it is important to choose that because you will have less perspective and typically the standard lens has a higher quality in a smartphone so if you're on an iPhone that would be wide lens if you're on an Android which is what we're using today to do the capture a tele lens typically would be that option but you want the standard lens um, I'm gonna actually choose this um, angle here and for the exposure which is the one at the lower uh, the best might be to always have it auto because then it will automatically adjust the exposure. And then at the middle top, you have the start position. Start position depends on really how uh, the car moves in and out from the turntable. You could really, really set that up so that it will speed up the process of capture and will make it easier for, for you to bring the car in, do the capture, and then take it out. For example, in this setup we have, we have a main door here and then the turntable here and we would assume that they would bring the car in position it here take the photo and then they will take the car out if that is the case then that means the driver's side is the one that most likely will be useful and here i'm going to just scroll down all the way to the driver's side so now i have the driver's side open um, select it and then on the top left i have the correct car and everything seems to be set up and uh, what I always want to do, this green outline you will see, it's really just a guideline to give you a feeling of where and how you want to position uh, your capture. Um, and I'm gonna just do this here. And remember, when you're looking at a car from the side, that's not the widest, but the moment it turns a little bit, so you will see also part of the front. So you always want to leave enough margins on the right side and the left side so that as this turn around, uh, it would be easy to figure it out. And if you could position the camera so you would sort of have the area where the camera goes, then the future days, it would be easier for you to do the capture. So now that we set everything, the one last thing, which is also the most important thing probably, is to make sure the turntable duration, which is basically here, 
is important. And if you remember, we measured and it was 44 seconds. So I'm gonna actually go back, it's 44 seconds and it is done. So now I'm gonna save it. So now we're good, the second, the direction, um, the uh, camera type, the exposure, uh, the start position, they're all correct. And, and this is really the first time you're doing this, right? Once you do this, all your capture is gonna follow the same standard. So now I'm gonna start the capture. And as soon as it comes to the position I want, I'm gonna start capturing it here as well. And it starts doing the capture. So when you do the capture and you have the time set up, it will automatically stop at the 44 second sign. So you don't need to do anything on the smartphone. Um, but uh, you need to stop your physical turntable with the remote so that you're ready for the next car and you don't have to like move things around. So that's the part you really want to watch. Uh, we do get this request sometimes that some of the turntables, because they have a DC motor and they're not a step motors, that means if you put a heavier car or you put a lighter car, the time that it takes to do the complete turn is going to be different. So in those circumstances, I'm gonna actually wait because we're close here. I'll just stop the motor, this automatically stops. So going back to the subject, if you are using a DC motor, if you do have the option between DC motor AC, um, or the step motors, do ask for step motors when you're purchasing your turntable. But if you already have the turntable and it's a DC motor, we do have a option to do this setting for you manual. You just have to um, contact us and it would be sort of a custom. So you would like start the capture, you have to watch it. When it comes back, you just have to stop it. So this way, it doesn't matter how heavy or light is, you still will have the exact nice interactive 360 photo. So now with this done, here you can sort of see the preview of it. It looks really nice. I'm happy with the result. I'll go next here. I'll start with the overall exterior photo. So from this point on, it is very similar to what you would do with the other 360 photo tutorials we have. So I'll, we wanted this video to be more about what is different and how you set up your turntable. So we will stop this tutorial here, but you're welcome to look at other tutorials we have that sort of take you from this point on and uh, you can find it in the description. We'll put the link somewhere in this video as a card so you could also look at that or if you couldn't find it, go to the description of this video and you will be able to find that as well as you could find other tutorials. We typically have one video per week that talks about not just how to use Glow 3D, but also about subjects that are important to car dealerships, especially around sales and marketing, on how you can improve those, how you can improve doing content, how you can use other softwares that can help you upgrade and scale up your online presentations, online presence, sales, marketing, and more customer engagement. With that said, thank you so much for watching.